So you're the only one that can kill That's the true. Minions. Oh my goodness. Whoops. All right. So next up, there's me. Uh, we got some interesting warrior cards. Warrior's been getting uh, a little bit of love too recently. These are both three drops. First one's a, a spell. Three mana blood warriors. Epic card. Add a copy of each damaged friendly minion to your hand. So this is kind of like the warrior echo, so, which, you know, you can do a whirlwind or revenge and just like, you know, get a bunch of cards in your hand uh, to just when you have a lot of stuff on the board. And it's probably synergized with, with the battle rage and all kinds of things too. Noxious, what do you think? Um, that's an interesting card for me to look at because on one end I'm like, when do you play this over battle rage in most of the decks that want to use that? But then again, it's like, well, I don't get fatigued and I can duplicate the big stuff that I care for. I like the fact that you can use it with inner rage. Basically, you're guaranteed mm -hmm. to be able to trigger it right away um, where you're getting the effect for zero mana. Uh, you can damage something. I don't know, like, I, I could see a world in which Tempo Warrior is a thing. Like, I could imagine a funny Hobgoblin deck where you can pull this off as guard draw. Um, like, as a way, with the seven, like the Ravaging Ghoul, somehow you pull this off. Or you find a way to deal one damage in AoE with the Tentacle. Uh, and then but the is gone, you right? just... Yeah, it's, it's gone, but like in wild, it would be fun. In standard, oh, I don't know no, what this is going to be in yet. Like, we don't remotely have the, the tools for this. In patron, it feels like <laughs> Get a, bunch a good patrons. way for them to stay in the game, right? Because otherwise, they just run out of, of options at some point. They kind of starve. They have one wave of patrons, and that's it. My issue, of course, is, well, how many activators will they really have after they even get those patrons back? So it's kind of, it's kind of tough to evaluate right now for me. Okay. Uh, JJ? Mm, I liked it. Like, did anyone even see like the life coach video? He was describing the artwork. In his video, yeah. Come on, the artwork's got to be. It's very colorful, and you know, it's just the morphing. Is yeah, life coach cool. shits yeah. on everything, though. Like, everything. It was, it was fun. It was funny, bro. Like, you, just, <laughs> he was talking about the artwork <laughs> of the card. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we're going i mean this card is like constructed why well, it's just you compare the better edge it's just worse um it's, it doesn't really do enough like if you see it for constructed of course if you want to tinker around i can see something but not really impressed by this card nothing special maybe just a fun card hmm. okay right any of the card drawing good for warriors here Oh, when I saw like a Coven Thief come out, I thought that card would be pretty bad too. Because it, in my head, I'm like, oh, it's only good if you're already winning and stuff like that. But I, I've come to respect effects like this a lot more, you know, especially because we have just so many tools to take advantage of it. Um, so I would not be surprised if this ended up being like a centerpiece of a pretty important warrior deck. I definitely think that there's going to be a patron deck regardless, because even if we're losing Best Bite. <laughs> and unstable ghoul which are definitely big losses there's still so many good ways to enable and rage and there's still like we still gain some tools like ravaging ghoul mm -hmm. and uh hogger like so i, I definitely think there's going to be some like patrony warrior deck i don't know if blood war if blood warrior is a card you want to put into an enrage deck even though that sounds really unintuitive it might be like the blood warrior deck might look completely different from the enrage warrior deck so or the patron warrior, uh, even though they play a lot of the same support cards. So uh, I think it definitely has potential. I wouldn't count the card out, but like I wouldn't be surprised if it saw absolutely zero play, and I wouldn't be surprised if it made a really powerful archetype on its own. Hmm. Okay. Uh, speaking of Ravaging Ghoul, why don't you start us off with that one too? Uh, this one's three drop, so it's not, uh, you know, a lot of people are. Thinking of Deathbite when they're talking about this card. Uh, obviously, it's quite different given that Deathbite's a weapon and you can, uh, the, your opponent will know when you're setting it up versus this card just sits in your hand. And they don't know. But what do you think of this? Uh, Ray, you, why don't you start us off? Just because it's your turn. With Ravaging Ghoul? Yeah, your turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it seems really good. I don't know. First, I saw it, I was like, yeah, it's not bad, but it's, you know, you lose a lot of the flexibility that Whirlwind had. The more I thought about it, the more like the flexibility on this is kind of nuts because mm -hmm. it is awkward to play a three mana card at a lot of points, but it's just so good against aggro on its own. Um, you, it lets your little dudes trade up really effectively. If you're behind, it punishes them and gives you a reasonable amount of stats uh, given the effect. So yeah, it just seems like 
pretty good and we'll see i don't know exactly how games are going to play out with it but it's mm -hmm. it's flexible and it's strong so i expect to see a lot of this card yeah Nox. um i don't know it feels like a consecration for warriors if you have whirlwind with it so it's going to look a little bit weird because it doesn't damage itself right so it'll go down to three two after your whirlwind i don't know if you can rely on that given that you already have like other tools but like it doesn't replace death bite in my mind just because of the fact that you have to you know you can hold death bite and you can't hold this but like i want to kind of talk about this in shadow word horror right like these two cards look like they were made to deal with muster for battle and implosion um in a weird way and those two are rotating out so it's kind of odd. like i feel like the planning for for it was to deal with muster and implosion but it's not gonna work i don't know going wild it's still a possibility um, it, it'll work for sure i just don't know like if it's gonna do what blizzard intended it to and i'm not sure you'd play this to enable anything unless it's like like over whirlwind because whirlwind is cheaper but you'll be able to play it as a standalone card later in the game so if you can slow down the match yeah and play with blood warrior on some janky turns sure why not i like it jj I mean, this card is only strong if you make some kind of Patron Warrior work, right? Um, in in Patron Warrior, how good it uh, it is? Um, it's worse than Death Spite for sure, of course, because mm -hmm. like Nox said, you can hold the Death Spite. You have to spend the free mana here for sure. Um, not a big fan of it yet. Like it depends how it works out. Are a lot of um, aggro decks, and yeah, just the one ones are going away. Like Nox just said. I don't think that card will be too good, but we'll wait to see. Like, I'm not too impressed. The body is decent. The effect, we have to prove that the effect is good enough for the meta. Otherwise, this card will not see play. Free free is not that amazing for free mana. It's standard, pretty standard, yeah. I mean, it gives you a decent curve, I guess. If Totem Golem comes out, you equip War Axe, and then you follow it up with this, you can deal with Totem Golem. Uh, this mm -hmm. plus the Whirlwind deals with a Shaman Totem board. So there's got to be some merit to it, right? Like it is. Yeah, okay. that's true. It's not a bad card. It's just I don't know yet what the metal look like. So it's hard to evaluate. Yeah, like trades. I said, like the effect, the effect has to be good enough. I mean, it trades a spider tank and stuff too. I, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I think I think the card is like too too good not to see play. Like overall, yeah. it's just the way that it sees play is going to yeah. be so different for every deck. So in the wi wild <laughs> world, would this card make a patron deck? Like, is this better? Is this an upgrade hmm. to anything in, in Patron in Wild? Wild's really weird. It's not about, like, how good cards yeah. are. It's like, you, you, you're going to develop a very, like, linear game plan, and then you're just going to want the cheapest cards to do that. Hmm. So you're not going to want flexible cards like Taskmaster or this card. You're going to want just cheap stuff to do broken things very quickly. So, hmm. like, we're all But, I mean, it does beat Implosion and Muster in, in Wild, right? So that hmm. might have hmm. a big effect. Just the fact that it paper. exists in the wild is already a huge deterrent to some cards being played at all. Yeah. So I mean, the I card think I was thinking about was it'll, like, it'll, yeah. it has the power to like shift the meta game in the wild. Funny enough, like on its own. Um, hmm. Yeah. We'll I mean, see. the card I was thinking of was like unstable because you know, unstable you can't control. Yeah. When it when it procs, where this card you can. So it, just a little different scenario for for a uh, patron deck. All right, so we've got one more card, and for ramp, this is basically a dream come true. Like when Grove Tender was announced. I was really surprised that it would be a symmetrical effect because, I mean, granted, a three-cost card that would give you a mana crystal on your own only would be a little bit over the top, but I feel like this is really solid. Like, the wild growth existing, this existing, means you reach turn six or your six-cost like, six cards really quickly. Uh, Last one is the Druid card. Meyer Keeper, four mana, three, three body, and it's an option card. Choose one, summon a two, two slime, or gain an empty mana crystal. Nox, you start this one. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, it's weird that they have Keeper of the Grove dealing two damage as Balakrai on one end, and then the first option that they have here is summon a minion on the board. Um, so I guess they're trying to do different things. Of course, the two-two is I don't think is going to be like the most impactful thing. But for Ramp, this is basically a dream come true. Like when Grove Tender was announced, I was really surprised that it would be a symmetrical effect because. I mean, granted, a three-cost card that would give you a mana crystal on your own only would be a little bit over the top, but. I feel like this is really solid. Like the wild growth existing, this existing means you reach turn six or your six cost like six cost cards really quickly. Uh, it's like mm -hmm. the nourish you wish you could play, basically. Okay, I mean this this is the wild growth into my, my, my keeper, right? Into six mana. 
Uh, well, the, the, just like was... whenever you get it, you'll get it either on turn five or, mm-hmm. you know, whenever you do. Okay, uh, JJ. It's all right. Uh, very good. Like Blizzard would never betray the, the trees, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> they just love them, right? They... Like this is exactly that, that's my Ram Druid super strong. When I'm looking at the cards, like. Like they just want to have Ram Druid really, really um, re- um, present. This card is just what what Ram Druid needs. What do I need? Do I need a board? Do I need Ram? Let's decide. Like four mana, five five or Ram. This card is super fucking. Good. It's like, yeah, there we go. Let's go <laughs> for the wild. I think this card is definitely like constructive playable. Yeah, it's insane. As, I think it's insane. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just just good. Not much to say about it. Like it'll see play in most druid decks, and the one thing about this that will make druid decks look a little bit different is once this is in the game, I think Sylvanas is going to become kind of core because they're going to naturally want more six drops, and you're already going to be playing Emperor. So mm-hmm. Sylvanas is makes up for druids' lack of removal. Helps you if you're behind on board. So you're just going to want to play like more six drops basically because of this guy. Yeah. So this good. is is this like an every druid deck, <laughs> which is you know, no. that that's definitely crosses the line of being bad for me, is when it's so no, good that it's every druid deck. Because there's there's gonna be aggro druid and there's gonna be beast druid potentially too. And in both of those decks you could consider not playing it, but um in general, it's pretty dumb. <laughs> <That's really laughs> if you make a general yeah. mid-range druid deck like you build them now this is in there twice yeah. every <laughs> single version can you imagine they don't yeah. take so, they don't take combo out <laughs> that's gonna be the yeah best. this the is the day that i just ever. like alt f4 oh, uninstall shit. and probably just go play like one, I don't one know, of the kill things, to collect on steam one of the things about getting a bunch of mana crystals um now that we have like one more playable wild growth type of thing is you're gonna want to compensate for that with more card draw because you're like if you ramp with this you're not getting that good of stats so mm-hmm. um you're gonna want more card draw in decks that have more ramp and they're probably gonna nerf ancient of lore i would guess yeah so i think that's gonna mean nourish is kind of like standard so all of a sudden you're looking at a deck with like innervate wild growth this guy and nourish so that's that's enough ramp to the point where the 10 mana guys might actually see play like the the god that we talked about yeah. earlier yep. name, yeah. I don't remember. Yasha or, Raj. <laughs> yeah or just other big expensive stuff you might see play because of because of the combination of this guy that's just, getting yeah that's scary because i mean i was watching people in the last day and i've, I've played plenty of aviana druid but i i've seen i was watching people in the last day like you know getting one top 100 with aviana druid and and this kind of card makes it even better so it's gonna be pretty crazy. Oh my god, Kodo Rider makes crazy. me so sick. Kodo Rider. Holy Rider. shit! If that comes out early, no, but if that comes out early, oh, it's gonna okay. be so disgusting. It's like it's the janky card that you don't expect to lose to, and then it comes out, and you have no five damage output because um, you've dealt with this three three. <clears throat> I don't know. It'd be weird. I want to see yeah, that. You have the hero power though, but yeah, do Kodo it. Rider would be... Yeah, of course you'd do it. But... Do it. <laughs> it's yeah. like that, or do you put a a solid. What, six? Yeah. A good a solid six drop, yeah. No, the following turn the following turns I'm talking about. It's like you'd have to hear. Yeah, of um, course. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so druids keep getting love, that's for sure. I think like JJ was talking about, like if we ever had any doubt that the that the Blizzard developers love Druid, uh, I think it's it's definitely gone now. Okay, let's take some questions, guys. And um, you know, thanks everybody for tweeting those. If you still want to get your questions in, definitely tweet those to Chanman V or uh, Value Town GG. Also, at this time, I want to I want to thank the patrons too, uh, all the Value Town patrons. Uh, I appreciate all the support. And if you want to, you know, support it or support everything we do on this show, uh, you can go to Patreon.com/slash Value Town and become a patron and participate in some of the cool rewards and milestones we have there. All right, first question we have. Um, Ang- Angus Hank, he asks, regarding the new Shaman weapon, what do you think about Elemental being a possible new minion or just being a new minion type? That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And we, yeah, we, we should use more. We only have how many? Like four? We have water? No, there's fire, more. Like Burlock, Pirate, I don't know. 
No, there's more than that. No, I'm you talking about elemental, elemental, fire elemental. But you have to put like the destroyer in there, right? You put magma rager, ice rager, all the mm, like even yeah, Ragnaros yeah, yeah. would be in there. Alakir would be in there. That's true. Dust Devil. I mean, uh, um, elemental is super awesome. A lot right? of them. Like the effects. Yeah, but I mean, they they want to spread murlocs to like two classes. They want to spread beasts to two classes, pirates to two oh. classes, elementals with what? Like it would be another shaman-ish specific subtype, like totems. Um, I don't know if they'd be willing to do that, right? Like print cards that are for a specific class synergy-wise. Yeah. Because uh, at that point, you might as well make it class cards that buff one another directly, like in a funny way. I don't know. Yeah, I think I it's. Know. I think it's definitely a, a possibility. I just. I like it, oh, I just remembered something, guys. I did. I do have one more card. I forgot it was at the bottom here. We have one more card. It's the hunter card. Totally forgot about the hunter oh. card. It, it came out today. So, okay. So there's yeah. all all these different names for it. I was looking on Reddit. They had some crazy name for it, but it's supposed to be called Call of the Wild, and it's an eight mana card. Uh, it's a spell. We've actually seen the artwork for a while now. Uh, but summon all three animal companions. <laughs> it's an epic card. So a lot of people guessing what it was. Now we know what it is, which is like it summons a Leoc, a Huffer, and a Misha all at once. This card good? JJ? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. What do we have? Uh, eight mana. We have all three companions. We go like, I think, 12-10 with the Leoc buff, right? And also... Yeah. Um, did we ever see a hundred deck without animal companion? Did we ever see one? I mean, yeah. it opens, of course, um, a different type of hunter. The stats are solid. You get also the five charge damage from Hoffer in, so it also gives you a little bit of reach. But I think in mid range hunter, this card, mm -hmm. this card will be good. I think this card will be good. Like it's it's definitely solid. Yeah, three minions on the board at once. That's pretty sweet, Ray. Uh, I mean, this is going the right direction for expensive cards uh, in Hunter. Uh, it's most of the time, like Blizzard makes any card that costs eight or more mana, we're just going to write it off as unplayable, with the exception of the ones that are like very strong. Clearly, like the new Ragnaros, or like this. This card seems solid. I, I'm still very wary of playing expensive cards in Hunter because, like I, I say it all the time, but in my opinion, Hunter is like overloaded for the later stages of the game because the hero power scales so well into the late game you always want to be hero powering late game and um i'd rather just keep my curve kind of low so it's really an eight mana card would have to do a lot to justify its inclusion in hunter um but if you're playing you know a slower hunter deck um and you want more high mains which some lists definitely do then this card is reasonable i just don't know the speed of the hunter decks that we're going to have and um like th this card would be so much better in like any other class um just because you really want to hero power with hunter late game mm -hmm. so okay nox yeah i have a hard time evaluating it because like on one end all that stuff doesn't die to anything but maybe like flame strike like even light bomb doesn't deal with it in the wild uh the only thing is oh, it's kind of hard to i mean it kills everything but leoc granted but mm -hmm. it's pretty close the only thing i'm worried about is like can you get to that turn with Hunter? Like, I know Control Hunter has been a thing, but is it ever better than just a straight-up more aggressive approach to the class? Um, well, and if so, like, do you play this on 8 or 10? Right? Like, you'd probably, if you have no. it in your hand, you probably want to play it on 8, but, like, how much are you gaining? You get, like, a Reckless Rocketeer, um, like a Booty Bay Bodyguard, and... I mean, well, you, no, get, you, have, you get buffs to whatever's on the leader. board, too. Like, you sure. thinking you Savannah. Say... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you have to say like Hunter was always like we we are searching for these high value cards because we don't have the the most card draw right and also yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, that's the thing and um, that is why this card is strong because you have so much um, value in one card it's exactly what you search for right and we're losing boom too so I think it's another... good I just don't know like how to evaluate it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like as far as what you're gonna do with it, where you're gonna fit it. Like, do you play it in Control Hunter? Because that doesn't sound right. You'd probably play it in mid range at the top of your curve, right? Like yeah. a pseudo King Crush. Yeah, it do it wouldn't be an aggro for sure, but I could see it making it like being some kind of boom replacement in the mid range. And um, yeah, I like the card. I, I have the I have, I have a feeling this card might be really really good, uh, but we'll have to see. I like the artwork. The artwork looks like 
freaking Avengers. <laughs> it's like the Beast Avengers or something like that. The art rock looks like Smark, Happy Beast. Should have had, had life <laughs> oh, make a video on this one, man. <laughs> no. All right. It's like well, the new Challenger, man. Check it out. Just check it out. New Challenger. <laughs> All yeah. right. Let's uh, let's get some more questions here. Um, okay. So Tim L. Tim L. has a pre-centric question. What does everyone think a good replacement for Light Bomb would look like or are hoping for in the old gods? Or will there even be something that's like Light Bomb for Priest? Uh, I I don't know if Priest is going to get another <laughs> removal type of spell since they have oh they just already God. got one. They, but uh, Shadow Word Slaughter six mana. The <laughs> Shadow Word Slaughter. <laughs> like you just. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Right. I don't even know at this point where they're going to print. Like it's so. It's so silly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't uh, know if they're going to get one. Quite honestly, I don't. I. They only have four cards left, so <laughs> they better be awesome cards, whatever they are. Uh, but I have a feeling there it's not there's not gonna be anything like a light bomb. Yeah. You know, what do you guys think? Uh, you already have Lock and I Circle mm -hmm. don't, and, and Holy Nova and Excavated Evil. I don't think the class really necessarily needs another AoE, although Light Bomb is definitely very good, very important in matchups like Secret Paladin. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great card, sucks to see it go, but um the the idea is if every time an expansion came out they just replaced the old cards with slightly different ones. Things wouldn't really change that much, right? So it's good that <clears throat> Priest isn't relying on some single AoE spell still. Like it, it, they shouldn't just replace every card that's rotating out. That's part of what changes. Mm -hmm. You want it, the class to lose life bomb and get something different. So Yeah, yeah hopefully we'll see some different kinds of Priests, right? Not just crazy control ones and dragons. Those are like the two. I, we saw some Reno recently too. But I don't know, JJ, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Do you think any... Any uh, full or very all-encompassing removal is is uh, likely for the rest of the cards for Priest? I mean, it's just, it's okay. Like, like Rena said, like, we have enough removal for Priest, and maybe we just make the deck a bit more not that fatigue heavy. We just put in a bit more threats, and we don't need that much removal, I think. Yeah, we don't need it. Like Also, like he said, like the Escort Evil can do a good work. It's okay. Not a big deal. Yeah. I think uh, we might see like a bigger excavated evil, like an eight mana five damage. Um it's not quite light bomb, but like I wouldn't be surprised if they printed like a very high cost twisting nether esque priest card for removal instead of a six cost light bomb. Um I, I would that maybe is what I would see. Like at most. Five. Is, yeah. Ugh. Five damage AoE, eight mana. So kind of a flame strike basically. Sure, but everything gets hit, including your own card. So yeah, okay, more like elemental destruction then. Um, sure. mm, I hope not. <laughs> I like. I hope they just go with a complete different direction, like the the guys are saying. A two drop. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, let's see. Next up, let's. Um, there's one that was here. I guess what uh, what card do you think is going to be? Um, it's let's see how do they word it here. It's it's basically what card do you think is is going to be? Um, you think most people are, are wrong? You know, like like people have been giving reviews and and you, you think that they're likely to be wrong about it just maybe you're unique in that way or just you know in the minority in thinking that way. Anybody? Let me pull up the list of cards. Yeah. I think it comes to mind off the top of my head. I know we talked about uh, a couple last. Lord. I know we talked a couple. Yeah, there was we... definitely one last episode that we were that was disagreeing on. Yeah, definitely disagreeing. I mean, Firebat. Yeah. I know in Scaled Raven. Nightmare. I know the. Dragon, oh, this Huckster. Wasn't it Huckster? Like, like that was. I don't. Oh, I think a lot. Of, yeah. I think a lot of people agree that Huckster is a good. Good Pretty good, out. yeah. We yeah. didn't really talk about the Vilefin Inquisitor too much, like the the Murloc guy that gives your hero power. Oh, um, but I don't think okay. it's like there's much to talk about because it's basically like a Murloc standard Murloc deck, and with Murkai going away, then uh, we'll have to see what comes out. Like, do we get Muster for Murlocs? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like maybe maybe the Hammer Murlocs. of Twilight, like <laughs> Hammer of Twilight, would probably be the card. Like I've seen a lot of very very varying reviews of that card. Okay. Some people either love it and think it's great, or just think it's absolute shit. So or like hardly playable. It's kind of uh, yeah. in between. 
I, can uh, I think the Forbidden Priest card will be pretty nuts. You really? Okay, yeah. you think that's going to be crazy, huh? I mean, somebody did a... I think it was a Reddit post that might be still that's up true. there, or it was yesterday, and he, he, he just, like, posted his sample uh, of him using, or just... Uh, uh, just what would come up basically at one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop. And it was kind of interesting. The stats were, were definitely interesting. I think, I think eight drops were almost always good. Uh, so it, it kind of gave you a representation of when to use it or when you'd have the highest consistency. Uh, but the flexibility on that card is cool for sure. I just, yep. Yeah. It's still not two drops. The two drops are still going to suck. <laughs> like if you use it. Yeah. Praying for a two, three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm praying for a two mana two three that does something. I don't care what it is, just something. That's not Shadow Boxer. <laughs> it's not Shadow Boxer. <laughs> JJ, you got any card that might be good? Mm. It's kind of hard to, to say. Uh, yeah, I can't really like the, the cards which are bad. Like they are so obviously bad. That's the problem, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> so. Hmm. I don't really see something like sticking out where I say, yes, that's going to be a card people are wrong about. No, mm -hmm. not really. Not really. Like, where, like, the, this is what Blizzard does. They, they put the cards pretty pretty clearly into a scale from good to bad, and they show which are the good ones and the bad ones. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thomas Nickel, he asks, um, do you guys think with the change of BGH and adding the thing from below the, that Black Knight will make a return to the meta? I think if the metagame slows down at all, Black Knight's back. Like, that's it. I've been trying it recently just to see how it works, and it's not quite there, that's for sure. But, yeah, things I mean, starting to see taunts more, for sure. They're, like, setting the stat line also a bit down, right? Like, it's not like we're going to be, like, these Shredder and stuff. Like, like um, if you have more taunts, like, to think from below, like, Black Knight is a card. The problem that it has, like, there are so many 5-5 five, five bodies or 5 attack. Uh, five health minions that that makes black black knight really bad right and also like ram drawing make uh, druid making a comeback right like what we said that might be just an issue to run him again hmm, okay all right what do you think yeah i mean i'll see more play probably it's a pretty strong swing effect and uh we're gonna see more ram druid for sure i think that uh the stats are just getting progressively worse because there's a there's a lot of Power, I don't want to use the word power creep, but Blizzard definitely, like, clearly was not happy with how the Grand Tournament was received because it didn't really impact the metagame at all. So I feel like they're really overcompensating with this set because yeah. these cards are, like, very, very high power level and you just have, like, a bunch of, like, Yetis with upsides. That was, like, the worst cards. It, it's a lot of strong stuff in this set, mm -hmm. for sure. So, yeah, um, I, I expect Black Knight probably see more play than he does now because he can't see less yeah, yeah definitely uh a couple more Resonance. i mean all right go ahead Knox. Like, like last thing though like you bring up a good point though like i wish the grand tournament was basically becoming playable as a result of this coming out like that was my hope was like everybody's gonna go back because finally you know gvg is out and the, the power level is going to be the same across the board but um nope nope it turns out old gods is going to be like substantially stronger i think than gvg uh, than tgt even offers uh so it might just be the set that nobody has ever played like it just might be remembered that that set to just suck <laughs> yeah I think so. oh by the way i didn't give a shout out to kieran burn burn was the guy who asked about you know which bad looking cards would turn okay. out amazing uh sure. let's see um okay resident sleeper he asks is hearthstone going in the wrong direction with dedicating the majority of a set to four old gods I wouldn't say they're dedicated majority of the set, right? Like, it's probably it's probably like a quarter, maybe. Maybe a quarter of the set is going towards towards each of the gods. Less than that, I think. I think less than that. Less than okay, that. yeah. So, I don't think it's majority. And even I mean, if what we're making. Go ahead. Uh, what I'm making is like we're giving like um, people a bit help on deck building, right? We're giving like this is your win condition. Here can you build a deck around. Is it a good direction? And new players in there, right? And it's not yep. like a majority of the card base. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, classic. Uh, speaking of tribes, would you like Hearthstone to be like MTG Magic, as in every single card has a tribe? I would. 
but the problem is it's like how do you make like you can't make tribes uh, there's a lot of tribes you can't make like pirate like how the fuck like you'd have to have two sub tribes i don't have any problem with having like a goblin pirate uh or like a I think a double tribe guard, but I feel like Blizzard wants to keep it super simple. And it also opens up a ton of balance issues where some of the older stuff that you printed for Synergy might impact some of the new stuff that you make. And I know they're really, really scared of printing other cards that are going to do, you know, broken stuff like Warzone Commander, kind of preventing the Dreadsteed like cards coming out. Uh, so, yeah, like I'd like it, but I think Blizzard is going to stray away from that. Okay. Uh, how do tribes work? I mean, I, I'm not familiar with how tribes work in Magic. Every card is a type. It's the only oh, difference. Oh, is, that, is so that what it is? Okay. <laughs> yeah, everything's a beast or mm -hmm. human or something, and not, not all the not all the tribes have like synergy cards necessarily, but um, they all have a type. And I don't I don't think it's a bad direction to go. Right? We have a bunch of random vanilla dudes that don't have types. Like mm -hmm. the yeah. the ancient one doesn't have a type. That feels kind of weird. Yeah. He should be like yeah. demon or. God or something. It's a faceless thing. I don't even care what that faceless subtype is supposed to be, but like, can you make some of those? Kind of shapeshifter uh, is what it is yeah. in magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Octopus. Right. I don't know. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Everyone's a Kraken now. Like, all the old gods That's awesome. run away. Is there really an octopus? Yeah. Try. Oh, there is, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I thought you were joking. Wow. It doesn't do shit. Okay. It doesn't do shit, but it is That's an octopus. Funny. You know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, I think that's going to be it for questions. Thanks for all the folks that, that wrote in or tweeted your question. Um, going to wrap up the show. Good, definitely good times, JJ, having you on. Got to have you on again, man. No. Glad to be here. <laughs> I like talking about cards. Yeah. Ah, these are like the more exciting things, right? New cards are coming up. Everybody's in pock jump mode. That's really cool. I like it. It's also like the theory crafting is so fun. I do it a lot of um, some of my friends. It's so nice. Yeah, this is the most. I mean, the most exciting time is like analyzing them as they announce them, and then we you do a post analysis and see how wrong we were, that sort of thing, and then you actually get into the. Trogzor was building. good. Trogzor is really Trogzor, good. Trogzor, yes, Trogzor. Actually, Ray, did you say Trogzor was ever good? I said it was. I said it was awful and would never see. Oh play. man, okay, all right. I, and everyone else said it was good. And, and literally no, everybody awful. else said it was good. Yeah, yeah. including. I got a lot of shit so. for saying Doctor Boom is the worst piece of shit power creature. <laughs> so much shit, dude. Yeah, no <laughs> idea the shit I got for that. I did not good say Doctor Boom was good. I didn't say it was good. Trogzor, <laughs> I said, yeah. Trogzor I said it was awful. I'll never see yeah. play. And everyone's like, no. Right, no I had hope. It's the I heard the same guys. thing about Varian too. Uh, I didn't yeah, like variants. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Varian. Same logic applies, right? Yeah. So you gotta wonder about this set too. You know, as to what that one's gonna be. Um, mm. But yeah, JJ, uh, you wanna do any shout outs before you take off? Mm, shout out! Uh, shout out to my my team, Complexity, of course, because mm. they support me every time. Oh, well, that's it, I guess. All right. Noxious. Yeah. Likewise, shout out to Complexity, JJ. Thanks for coming on last minute. Yeah. A little bit of a. Uh, Last second request, but it was cool to have you on. Yeah, yeah thank you. Ray. Mm. Shout out to Lock and Load. It will be a very good one day. Dude, I've and, uh, played against it a couple times. Dude, you last get night. you get called the wild from that, right? <laughs> Just that's the best fucking case scenario. Late yeah. game, you need a threat yeah. win, and you have nothing else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Shout out to shout out to you guys for being on the show. It's been fun. Um. Yeah, I don't know that much. Shout out to shout out Temstrom .com for providing affordable, <laughs> comfortable clothing to the masses. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Twitch and G2A. All right, awesome. And I will thank you guys for doing the show today. Uh, Noxious Ray for doing it every week with me, and then JJ coming on. Loving it, man. We, we, again, we have to definitely have you on in the future and uh want to give a shout out to obviously tempest storm for sponsoring the show and their sponsors which ray and i already talked about uh and lastly i want to give a shout out to just nidra nidra and just any of the other you know journalists actually writing you know pieces that you know i know it take a lot of time and you get a lot of crap for it you know like i know he's gotten a, you know, a lot of uh threats and stuff like that and that's never fun but you know the, these are the type of things that in, in the esport and gaming but particularly esports you know we, we need people that that are you know talking about these kind of difficult things or revealing some things that are going on and uh you know i just want to give him a shout out for that because we didn't, again we didn't get a chance to, to cover it when he first released his piece and i just want to uh you know just 
give some love out for him. Uh, but if those of you that missed the beginning of the show want to catch the episode, you can check it out on youtube.com slash chamianv. I'll, uplo- I'll upload this in about 20 minutes, so you can expect it there. Uh, and you can just tune in if you enjoyed the show. You know, Definitely follow the Tempest Storm channel and tune in every, every week. We're always at 4 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, uh, Central Eastern Summertime. <laughs> I think that's exactly what it is. But until next week, guys, for Super JJ, Raynad, Noxious, and myself, Chamianv, we'll see you next week. Peace.